Jack, what are you doing? I'm using AI to improve my business. It's called Rag. Ever heard of it? I don't think that's how it actually works. Oh, it doesn't? No, no, no. It doesn't mean use an actual rag. Let me tell you what rag actually means. Come with me. Okay. In this video, we'll cover what is rag and why everybody is starting to use it, how you can best use it for your own business, and how it actually works. Make sure to stick around for the bonus tip at the end of this video, which will potentially save you thousands of dollars in implementing the approach yourself. So first of all, let's talk about what RAG actually is and how you can use it for your own business. RAG is a new approach that allows you to use ChatGPT or another language model alongside your own documents to help answer users' questions. It works sort of like a digital librarian that picks out all the right relevant documents and picks the right information out of those documents to generate the best possible answer for the user. And that's how we get RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. This can be used in a lot of different use cases. Like let's take Jack and his farm software, for example. He wants to get a lot of new customers and make sure that his prospects are getting their questions answered as soon as they arrive on his site. So he adds a RAG powered chatbot on there that's going to answer things based on all of his documentation and his landing page materials. He will also qualify leads through this process to make sure that they would be a good fit and that his offering is going to actually help them. Now that Jack is having a lot of success getting new customers, he needs a solution for customer support. His support team is overloaded getting the same questions over and over and so he adds another RAG powered chatbot that is going to answer questions based on all of his product documentation and previous cases that have been open. Finally, now that Jack has a lot of new customers, his business is growing and so he's doing a lot of hiring. And all of these new employees are asking a lot of similar questions like, what is our 401k match? Can I bring my chihuahua to work? And which holidays do we celebrate? To answer all of these questions, Jack uses a rag powered chatbot right within Slack to answer them quickly. This saves his HR team time and helps his employees get a better employee experience. So let's take a closer look to see how this approach actually works. It's gonna get a little bit technical, okay. but make sure you stick around till the end of the video because I'll be sharing a bonus tip that will potentially save you a lot of time and money implementing this yourself. Before we can answer a user's question, we need to prepare our data set. That means we need to take our documents and create what's called embeddings for them. Embeddings capture the essence or the meaning of the document in a numerical form. This allows us to compare different documents and see how similar they are in meaning. This is called semantic search, as opposed to keyword search. So if somebody asks us, can I bring my chihuahua to work? We'll be able to find an answer because our pet policy closely matches that question, even though the word chihuahua isn't found anywhere in our documents. So once we've created these embeddings for our documents, we take them and we store them in a vector database, such as Pinecone. I found Pinecone to be a very powerful solution because it allows you to combine semantic search with keyword search as well as other filtering options. So once our documents are in the vector database, when a user asks a question, we can calculate a new embedding for that question and match it up with the most relevant documents. Then once we've retrieved the document, we can combine the question and that document when we make a query to ChatGPT. ChatGPT will use its reasoning to pull out the relevant information from the document to answer the user's question. I do want to mention a major limitation with this approach, and that is the fact that the answer to a user's question has to be found in one of the documents that you load into your vector database. That means the approach won't be able to handle things like generating a SQL query to look into your database and it won't be able to answer questions that are just not answered by any of your documents. You have to make sure that you have logic in place to handle that situation and that your chatbot simply says that they don't know the answer. And now it's time for my bonus tip. Since this approach generates so much value and it's so new, people have been starting AI automation agencies to help businesses take advantage of it. Usually an agency will find a use case such as lead generation or customer service and build chatbots for them using their own data. These agencies often handle the data integration aspect and the deployment of these chatbots. 
So they will get your data, load it in, make sure all the embeddings are calculated, and then surface the chatbot through your site or whatever channel that you're hoping to use it on. You could work with an agency if you want to save a lot of time since they have a repeatable process and experience with all of this. But my bonus tip is that you can actually use the tools that the agencies are using themselves and potentially save thousands of dollars and have more control over your data and how the chatbot behaves. Now, if you don't want to pay for an agency, you have certain tools at your disposal. The first tool I want to talk about is called GPT Trainer. It has a pretty convenient way to upload a number of different files in different formats and then answer questions based on the data within. It allows you to preview how the chatbot is going to behave and even add some personality to your chatbot. If you want to get a little bit more hands-on with designing your chatbot, you can use one of the tools that the AI automation agencies often use called VoiceFlow. In VoiceFlow, you have a visual interface which you can wire up to handle different situations that your users might go through as they're interacting with your chatbot. This can also use the RAG approach under the hood and answer questions based on your documents. Ultimately, if you want to save more time, you could work with an agency, and if you want to save more money, you could just implement the solution yourself using the tools that the agencies are using themselves. If you're looking to get started with implementing the RAG approach yourself, I recommend that you check out the LangChain library. It creates some convenient abstractions on top of these various concepts and can handle certain things like chunking your documents in case they're too long. Additionally, if you want to have a nice user interface on top of LangChain, you should check out the Flowwise project, which allows you to piece these things all together visually. And if you just want to analyze some data locally on your own, there's actually a feature within ChatGPT that you can use called Advanced Data Analysis that will allow you to upload files directly to it and then ask questions. It will write like Python scripts and things like that that, that it will execute on your files to extract certain data. And that can be a quick way to just do some data analysis if you're not looking to surface that to the end user. So hopefully this video helped you understand a little bit more about the RAG approach and why it's so popular and how you can save some time by using these pre-built tools or hiring an agency to set this up for you. Ultimately, it's a way to uh, surface information from your documents to your users more quickly. And it's a, it's a great way to apply the power of ChatGPT. So if you found this video useful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel to see more info like this. Till next time, take care.